All right, guys, just back here with another video. So today I wanted to kind of break down uh, what happened the other day with the Toronto Police Association. I don't know if you guys saw that, but basically they've, been, they've called out the liberals saying that their policies and their tactics aren't working, and that criminals aren't listening, and that gun violence is up and all these crimes are up, and they're not happy with the liberal caucus, of course. Nobody is these days. So Pierre Polyev made a video, and it's called Police Are Sounding the Alarm. I also have another video of Raquel Doncho, who is one of my favorite conservative MPs, just absolutely scorching uh, Jennifer O'Connell on this subject as well. So let's get into these videos, and then we'll talk about it after, like usual. Jarring and deadly. Violent gun crime is on the rise across Canada, with big cities in the line of fire. Canada's largest police union says there's been a 45% increase in shootings and 62% spike in gun-related homicides in Toronto compared to this time last year. The most important thing is to keep repeat violent offenders in custody. Two years ago this week, the Canadian government put a freeze on the sale of handguns. It is no longer legal to buy, sell, or transfer a handgun in Canada. In recognition of the ban's anniversary, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau shared this message on X, saying in part, we choose your safety over the gun lobby every time. That prompted the Toronto Police Association to respond to Trudeau, saying, your statement is out of touch and offensive to victims of crime and police officers everywhere. Whatever you think you've done to improve community safety has not worked. A pretty bold statement. Yeah, absolutely. I think our members are absolutely fed up with the Prime Minister. To be honest, it's lip service. He knows that it doesn't impact the crime in this city. When asked if the Toronto Police Association supports Canada's handgun ban, their president answered point blank, no. After nine years of it. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, you just, you see those numbers there and you just, sorry about that, but you, you see those numbers there and you just kind of think to yourself, like, what's happening? How does it increase that much in just one year? And now even the police association has come out and said, we've had enough, right? I mean, their, their officers are now at more high risk of getting hurt. Our citizens are at more high risk of getting hurt. There's shootings in like just regular residential na neighborhoods on almost like a daily basis. It's just disgusting what's happening to Toronto, a once great city. So you can thank the liberals again, Toronto, and considering how often you guys vote them in, you see what happens when you have unresponsible politicians who are in office who are supposed to be in charge of protecting us and doing whatever they can. And what do they do? Oh, you've uh, shot someone? Release them, out on, release them out on bail. No worries. We'll give you another shot, literally and figuratively. It's disgusting. Now, you have this video here of Raquel Doncho. Uh, she posted a video on her YouTube saying, Liberal says police association is the gun lobby. And yep, you'll hear how stupid this really gets when Jennifer O'Connell starts speaking. But let's play this video it's just a couple more minutes, guys, and then we'll talk about that after, like usual, as well. After nine years of NDP Liberals, taxes are up, costs are up, crimes up, and time's up. The Toronto police are on the front lines of gun violence in Canada. One of their officers was recently shot by a repeat violent offender. And yet, shockingly, yesterday, the Liberal Prime Minister took some deranged victory lap on social media for his attack on licensed, trained, and police-vetted sport shooters. And let's remember that after nine years of Liberals, gun violence in Canada is up 116%. Their approach has categorically failed, Mr. Speaker. When will they finally get tough on the criminals responsible for gun violence? Mr. Speaker, it's a shame to see once again conservatives using the talking points of the gun lobby instead of standing up for victims of crime and standing up to get... You heard that, right? She just said the gun lobby, where, where she's referring to, Raquel Doncha was referring to the police association. That's the gun lobby now, apparently, according to these dumbass liberals. It's unbelievable how stupid these people are, and yet they still get votes somehow, some way. Guns off our streets. Mr. Speaker, we also know that women are disproportionately affected by gun violence. And what do conservatives do? They want more guns on our streets. They cut funds from CBFA to stop the import of illegal guns and then stand in this place acting as if they support victims of crime. Mr. Speaker, it's a shame. We have committed to get guns off our street while conservatives work for the gun lobby. In the words of 
the Toronto Police Association to this Liberal Prime Minister, quote, criminals did not get your message. Our communities are experiencing a 45% increase in shootings, a 62% increase in gun-related homicides compared to the last year. What difference does your handgun ban make when 85% of guns seized by our members can be sourced to the United States? Your statement is out of touch and offensive to victims of crime and police officers everywhere. Whatever you think you've done to improve community safety has not worked. When will the Liberals call an election so we can finally bring an end to the crime and chaos they created in our streets? Mr. Speaker, once again, let's talk about conservative logic. They think putting more guns on our street is going to somehow keep our community safer. We know that that doesn't work. Their cuts to CBSA to allow the import of illegal guns is something that we have had to clean up. Conservatives care only about the gun lobby and not about Canadians. Mr. Speaker, we have put in place... A no- yeah, that's, uh, that's enough of that. So, but, but I mean, yeah, Ra- Raquel Doncho just pointed out the facts. And yet Jennifer O'Connell is going to sit there and say, oh, it's the gun lobby and conservatives want to put more guns on the streets. It's like, first of all, there are a lot of places in the world where they do have a lot of guns. For example, Switzerland. Oddly enough, they actually have the same amount of guns per capita as the United States. You never see school shootings. It's like gun violence is not nearly as common. They have guns. Making guns illegal or banning certain guns does not stop crime. Clearly. Clearly. How can they even say otherwise? Look at the numbers. 45% for gun violence, 62% increase in homicides in one year. Not to mention, now, like, when you ban guns, who has guns now? Cops and criminals. The average person can't defend themselves. And considering the wave of crime, the cops can't do much about it because they're so busy all the time. They can't get to each place where there's a threat of gun violence. You got to let people defend themselves. At least in my opinion. I know there are also countries like the United States. They definitely have a shooting problem. They also have a mental health problem. Switzerland, you don't see that. That's why you're not seeing all this violence. It's not a gun issue. It's a mental health issue. And you need to fix that first. First and foremost, that's the problem. You can't just say, okay, guys, um, having a gun or this kind of gun is illegal now. If they're, if they're planning to do something illegal with the gun in the first place, they'll just go get a gun illegally, obviously. And you're seeing it with the numbers. But these out-of-touch liberal MPs, and of course, led by their liberal prime minister, they don't see it, and they're just going to keep doubling, tripling, and quadrupling down on these awful policies, and Canadians are being hurt, and police officers of this country are also being hurt sometimes even worse because of their policies and they just want to blame conservatives i'm surprised she didn't bring i'm surprised she didn't blame stephen harper he seems to be for some reason their scapegoat now even though justin trudeau has been in office and most of these mps have been in office for nine years oh it's harper's fault oh it's remember when pierre polyev was housing minister like what does that have to do with crime but they always seem to bring that stuff up don't they It's like, why don't you talk about the last nine years when everything is getting worse, you imbeciles? And this is why you're seeing them get absolutely crushed in the polls and why it's going to be even worse for them in the upcoming election. Because the polls, I have a feeling the conservatives are going to um, overperform from the polls. When when election night comes, they're going to do much better than what they're pulling at now. Like I said, I think they're going to get around 50% of the vote. They should get more than that, but, I mean, again, Canada is, for some reason, very liberal. You saw what happened in New Brunswick the other day when they had a liberal premier win a majority. I don't know what their problem is, but I guess they're going to have to face consequences for their actions, too. But let me know what you guys think about what this, what this, um, or what you guys saw in these videos today, because what I saw was just absolute nonsense from the liberals continuing to double down triple down, quadruple down, as I've said, on their horrible policies. But let me know if you agree with me or you if you agree with the Liberals. I always enjoy hearing what you guys have to say in the comment section. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help grow the channel. Thanks again so much for watching, everyone, and I'll be back shortly with a new video.